Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And we are going to talk about Mother of Demons, which is a Spirit of Ghost Rider comic book. And this is kind of like how Venom does on Venom, you know, in the Venom universe, a uh, Donny Cates will have other writers kind of jump in and do these. Uh, and sometimes Donny writes them too, but they're like these one shots called Web of Venom. And they have like Wraith and like Venom, you know, and all those ones. Uh, so this one is actually written by Ed Breeson, who writes the main Ghost Rider series. And this looks like it's going to be a spin-off book, you know, where maybe they'll do more of these. I guess it depends on how well this one sold. So I don't know how well it sold. I haven't checked the numbers on it, but hopefully it did pretty well. Because I think overall this is a good issue, but it does do one thing that I have a problem with, uh, typically with one-shot stuff. Because obviously you want some importance to these. Like, you you know, it's like, a, you know, you want something there, which I feel like it already had. Like, it tells the backstory of Lilith and kind of her her battle with uh, wanting to take over the crown from Johnny Blaze because, you know, she's wanted it from uh, from Mephisto for years. And then now she wants it from Johnny Blaze since he replaced uh, Mephisto as the King of Hell. So you kind of see her backstory. And I'm like, all right, that's great. That's actually kind of essential to the main story. But it's not like if you miss that issue it's not the end of the world. I mean, it would be nice to have it for sure. It's supplementary, but it's not like uh, mandatory. So it starts off like that, but then like the last, I don't know, maybe eight or nine pages um, very much feel like they should have been in a main Ghost Rider book, at least in my opinion. So, you know, of course I'm a Ghost Rider fan. I'm gonna buy it. It's, it's just a one, one shot, but I just feel like if you were out there and you're more of a casual reader and you're just picking up issues, you know, one through five or six or seven, you know, and you're just getting those issues, you're gonna get issue five and go. Wait, how did you know? How did Danny Ketch get out of purgatory? And that's because it happens in this issue. So if you're out there and you don't have this issue, you know, go get it. This is where I tell you about how Danny gets back from purgatory because that's where we last left Danny. He went there to meet uh, the spirit of corruption, and uh, I think as Belasco, he's like the king of limbo. Um, so this has Belasco in it too. So after we saw Danny go there, and he, uh, you know, the the giant spirit of uh, corruption was killed by Belasco. Belasco and the power from Belasco, you know, he, he transferred the power of the spirit of corruption into Danny. And so the spirit of corruption is like a spirit of vengeance. It's like, a, you know, one of those type of beings, but of limbo. And so, uh, so he passes that power on to Danny. And, uh, and then we just presumed he sent Danny back to earth. Well, you find out in this one that he does. Danny gets, comes back to Earth. But it starts off really neat, actually. Um, so the artist on this one is Roland Bosky. And like I said, uh, Ed Breeson drew it. I mean, I wrote it, I'm sorry, and Roland drew it. <laughs> and so it starts off in the Garden of Eden, which if you know me, I'm a big fan of stories like this. Uh, my comic book Monomyth that came out like seven years ago, that one was about, it was like a, a what if earth. That's what I always call Monomyth. And, and in that story, it was what if uh, Lucifer wasn't the one that fell from grace and it was St. Michael that fell. And so St. Michael becomes the devil and Lucifer falls and prevents Adam and Eve from eating the apple. Uh, and it and it changes the course of history pretty much. So um so this talks about uh, how Lilith was first uh, chosen and created to be the mate of Adam, and so she hooked up with Adam, kind of controlled him. We can kind of see him. He looks kind of you know uh, dead brain there. He's just like you know uh, completely under her her spell or whatever. And they had these demon children, and then she talked about how God didn't like that. So he sent angels down to kill the demon children and banish her uh, from paradise and then start over by giving him Eve. Uh, so Eve was the second woman that was provided by Adam and they had a much more uh, compatible relationship. Uh, but, you know, even though Lilith was cast out and she's in hell with Mephisto serving him, which she doesn't want to do, she had a partner, she said. And that partner became the snake that told Adam and Eve to eat the apple, which is pretty awesome, actually. I thought that was really cool. Uh, and then you see her like in a goat form, which is cool. So um, yeah, I don't know. I thought that was awesome. And uh, and they from there, they go into the history of hell and they talk a little bit about that. And they talk about uh, Johnny Blaze, how he defeated Mephisto and became the king of hell. So again, it's a good like, catch you up on stuff, but with new information. It's, you know, that's what I, I kind of rail against with Donny Keats sometimes in his Venom book is that sometimes he, re, you know, regurgitates the story or kind of says, hey, here's a, here's how to catch you up on a story, but he doesn't add anything new. Like he just basically gives you the information 
that you've already paid for if you've been reading the book the whole time. This is different. It has some of that information in there, but with you know a lot of new stuff. So you get to see the dynamic that Lilith, she hates Johnny Blaze. She hates the Ghost Riders because obviously she fought Dan Ketch throughout the 90s. And so she's like, yeah, I hate, I hate this. I hate that I have to, I hated serving Mephisto because he seemed to have more interest in humans and ruining humans. And she talks about how Mephisto um, you know, you know, we'll twist our words to make us hate each other. And it's just, these are things I always talk about. I always post about them on, um, you know, on social media and stuff about how, like, what if there really was a devil? Like, you know, what, how would he make us hate each other? Because obviously the more we hate each other, you know, the more evil wins and the less good wins. And so, uh, so I was, you know, and that comes from DMC, the remake of Devil May Cry, where it was like, there was energy drinks and those were meant to mind control us. There was TV, so the media controlled us. And it was like in the game, you had to go through and defeat all these different things that, uh, that are everyday items to us, you know, TV or people on TV, the media, music, um, and, uh, and like energy drinks and stuff. And you have to go and destroy all those things because they're all the things that are brainwashing humanity. And I know a lot of people don't like the remake of Dead May Cry, but for that reason, I really did like it. I thought the story was great. I was like, oh, what a cool twist. You know, I, I don't think you had to make a remake of that. It could have just been a sequel. They could have just made a sequel and still told that story, but I still thought it was cool. I was like, oh, and so it's always made me think about stuff like that, of how the devil would persuade us to hate each other. And so this kind of talks about that, this book. So uh, clearly Ed Breeson and I are on similar wavelengths there. Um, but you know, Johnny does not like Lilith. So he is always telling her to go, run away and, or get away from him because he knows who, what she is and you know, all of her battles with Danny and stuff. So she decides to go to Limbo and make a deal with Belasco, which makes me wonder because he looks kind of devilish. He's red. He's got a little gold on him. He looks a little bit like the snake that told, um, Adam and Eve to eat the apple. So I'm wondering if that's why Belasco is in limbo is because he, you know, worked with Lilith to, uh, you know, to corrupt mankind in a way. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just guessing. It's a, a, a theory of mine and I, there's nothing to back it up really other than I just got a feeling of it. Like I was like, oh, that'd be cool if Belasco was actually the snake. Uh, you know, that'd be cool. But may, who knows? Maybe Mephisto was a snake. I don't know. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So she goes and makes a deal with him and, uh, and then she goes and makes deals with other characters in the Marvel Universe, including uh, Jack-O-Lantern, our friend from the Venom comics. And what's cool is he apparently is the original Jack Lantern, this one here. And he says, you know, at one point later in the book, he goes, you know, there's like three or four people running around, you know, in my name, in my costume right now, like on Earth and stuff. Some are dead, some are alive. And he goes... But isn't that bull crap? <laughs> so I was like, that's cool. So this uh, Jack Lantern actually gets resurrected by Lilith and gets sent back to Earth uh, for a very specific mission. And then we see that Lilith, she gets older. So this is her 90s form, but aged. So she gets older because time works differently in hell. The longer you're down there, the eons pass, you know, you know, years and years pass. So the longer you're down there, that's what Johnny Blaze is feeling. So they talk about that in this issue too, that Johnny isn't even sure if the Avengers are still alive up on earth. He's like, what's going on up? He's like, I feel like I've been down here for eternity. Like time just doesn't work down here the same way. So because of that, Lilith in her forms, she ages faster. And so she ends up giving birth to her next form and then she dies. Um, so yeah, so now she's, well, there's partial nudity there kind of, but she's covering herself up. Um, but so she has now a younger form and that's why she's in this new form that we see on the cover, which doesn't look very much like the nineties form. I mean, she has the white skin, but other than that, she looks a little different. So again, new form. Uh, they even bring Deacon back, which is pretty cool. Another uh, old villain of uh, Ghost Riders. Um, I think Scarecrow uh, pops up in here like once or twice. Um, yeah, I think down here. He's got a pumpkin head too. Um, this version of Scarecrow. Not the one from Batman, obviously, but yeah, this one. Um, so yeah, there's there's a couple of cameos in here of just different things. They show hell. They show the giant worms. They talk about how, um, you know, when Johnny Blaze... When these demons, like, you know, and these souls like Deacon and, and Scarecrow and jack o and stuff... Some of them just want to take the throne from him. So they want to kill him and become the king themselves now because they think they can. Uh, you know, they think they can beat him, which obviously they can't because not only is Johnny Blaze a ghost rider now, but he has the power of the king of hell. So by sitting on the throne, he's powerful. And then the more evil stuff he does down there or the more punishments he dishes out, it seems like the more powerful he's getting too. So whenever Deacon and all these villains uprise against him or these other demons uprise, he sends them back to the bottom of hell. He's like, yeah, I can't kill them. They're already dead. They're in hell. So I just send them back down to the worms, you know, to have the worms eat at them. And then eventually they'll dig their way back up to the top, you know, and I got to fight them again. And he's like, and it, 
And that's why time is just weird down here. He's like, you know, I feel like I fought Deacon like a dozen times, but you know, how many days have passed on earth? You know, maybe only 10 or two, you know, or a million days, you know, he, he doesn't know. So it's, it's really neat. And then of course he, you know, earns his title of uh, king by doing all these punishments. There is some demons that start to fall in and go, okay, this guy's here to stay, you know, so we're going to have to, you know, deal with him uh, or we're going to have to worship him because uh, it looks like Mephisto's not coming back. And this guy is the guy doling out punishment. So, okay, all hail the king. Um, so you, it starts off as a little bit story. You get through, then you start following Johnny a little bit. So I'm like, okay, this is where it's starting to feel like it should have been in the main, uh, you know, book. Like, I feel like all the Lilith stuff, it's like maybe like 10 to 15 pages of Lilith stuff. That almost feels like its own separate issue. And then the rest feels like it could have just been a ghostwriter book. Um, and so that's why I kind of like, oh, I like this, but I, I picked up issue five and I remember reading it and going like the first couple of pages and going, wait, what, wait, why, what, what happened to, how is every, what is this, what's going on? Like, I feel like I missed a, a chapter and that's when I looked up online and found this. So I actually bought this after issue five. So I stopped reading issue five and came back and read this. And then, so that's what I'm saying. Don't make the mistake I made. And I try to follow Ghost Rider comics, but I had no idea this was coming out until I read issue five and I was like, no, I feel like I'm missing something. And I went online and I saw someone, I think on Twitter posting, uh, I think it was our friends at uh, the Ghostwriter podcast and stuff like Inner Demons. I think they were like, hey, don't forget to pick up this issue. And I was like, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> so anyway, the, the ending of the book is about uh, Danny and him getting sent back to earth, like I said. So he comes back and sees the caretaker. He doesn't, you know, he wants her to get away from him. He's like, no, you knew that when I went there, I was going to be, you know, endowed with the power of the spirit of corruption, didn't you? And she's like, Yes, there's a war coming and this is the vision I saw. I saw that you were gonna have that power. And so yes, that's why I, I worked out a spell to send you to limbo because I knew you would come back alive with this power. She goes, but I don't know what happens after the war starts. That's where my visions end conveniently, right? <laughs> but obviously there's powers at work that are blocking her powers. So she's like, so I, I can't help you pass this, this moment here. You have to make all the decisions now because this is the last thing I saw was that you become the spirit of corruption. So Danny, of course, is Danny. He's a broken person. So he's like, you know what? I do know what I'm going to do. And he goes to, a, <laughs> he goes to like a liquor store and he buys some bourbon and he just starts downing it right there. But on his way out, boom, jack-o'-lanterns waiting for him. And he's like, hey, can Ghost Rider come out to play? And Danny's not interested. He's like, no, I'm not a Ghost Rider anymore. I just want to drink this bourbon. It actually burns going down. It tastes pretty good. So get away from me, Jack Lantern. And Jack Lantern's like, well, you're just going to walk away from me? So Jack Lantern takes a pumpkin bomb and throws it into the liquor store and completely destroys it, kills everybody inside. And then he attacks Danny, which is obviously a mistake because Danny's like, look, I got this new thing in me. I don't know how to control it yet. So if you piss me off, it's going to come out and you're not going to like it uh, because this thing can actually go toe to toe with a ghost rider. And Jack Lantern's like, yeah, okay. And then boom, you know, Danny becomes the spirit of corruption and attacks Jack Lantern um, and doesn't just attack him, but he's like, as he beats him down, easily beats him down. Uh, and that's when Jack Lantern's like, yeah, can you believe there's a couple guys running around as me? How crappy is that? And then he gets beaten down by uh, the spirit of corruption, Danny Ketch now. And so Danny stands over him and he goes, who sent you? And he goes, all right, it was Lilith. He goes, but look, man, I just got back from the dead. Can you just let me be? And then Danny like looks over at the burning building and, and with all the people inside that are dead. And he looks back at Jack Lantern. He's kind of like, yeah, sure. I'll set you free. And then boom, stabs him with the sword and kills him. <laughs> like lifts him up in the air even and kills him. And, uh, and he says, he goes, you know, this is what I get for always uh, trying to walk away. And basically he's like, you know, I always feel like I don't have a, a horse in this race and I feel like I, I should stay away and not get involved. But I have this power now and, and Lilith, I found out about Lilith now. And, you know, she's been a pain in my butt for years. And now she's going after Johnny. And even though I hate Johnny and he took away my powers, I'm going to have to deal with him in some way. And we're gonna, I'm going to at the very least have to let him know about Lilith. So he's like, I guess I am still in this fight. And so that's where the book ends. So again, if you read issue five of Ghost Rider, Danny's already back and he's already doing stuff uh, because this is part of a new story called Heart of Darkness uh, 2. It's the sequel to the original Heart of Darkness in a way um, because it has Punisher and Wolverine you know, involved and there's and Blackheart is involved. So we'll talk about that in the next episode. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What did you guys think of Mother Demons? Have you read it? If you haven't, pick it up because like I said, it's essential and that's the good and bad of it. It's like normally when you do a one-shot, one-off, 
it's like, okay, maybe it, it, it sets up some side story or, it, you know, it, it's focused on Lilith or whatever. I'm like, that's cool. That, that helps you, you know, get into the world. But then once it started to transfer into a Johnny story halfway through and then into a Danny story where it literally shows him coming back from, uh, you know, from purgatory uh, or for limbo, I'm like, uh, that moment at least, at the very least, that moment should have been in a main Ghost Rider book, I feel. But that's my only really negative criticism of this issue because otherwise I thought it was really good. So you guys let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And we'll have more Ghost Rider stuff coming up. I'm gonna record a bunch today. I'm, re I'm rereading these issues. I'm gonna do the reviews and I'm gonna do a collection video. So all that stuff will be going up hopefully over this week and weekend. And then we'll get back to Venom Vlog and maybe X-Men stuff next week because this is the last show I need to catch up on. So I'm gonna do that for you guys today. So thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.